Hey there, curious minds. Did you know that the occipital bone is the main bone that makes up the back of your skull? Intrigued? Let's dive into everything you need to know about this fascinating bone. Welcome to our exploration of the occipital bone, a crucial part of the human skull. This bone plays a vital role in protecting the back of the brain, making it an essential component of our anatomy. Now, let's delve into the complexity of the occipital bone's structure and its intricate connections with other bones in the skull. This bone is not just a simple structure, but a key player in maintaining the structural integrity of our head. The occipital bone boasts unique features such as the foramen magnum, a large opening that allows the spinal cord to pass through. Its contribution to the overall structure of the skull cannot be overstated, as it forms the base of the skull and supports the weight of the brain. Here comes the fascinating part. Did you know that the occipital bone is involved in vision and the coordination of movements? Yes, you heard it right. This bone plays a crucial role in our ability to see and move seamlessly. Quick facts. Location neurocranium, bone type, flat bone, articulates with, parietal, temporal, and sphenoid bones, and atlas, arterial supply, middle meningeal artery. Key features and anatomical relations. The occipital bone is the single, large bone found along the posteroinferior aspect of the cranium. It is classified as a flat bone, forms the foramen magnum, and contributes to the formation of the neurocranium. The occipital bone includes the following bony features. The occipital bone is located posteroinferior to the parietal bones posteromedial to the temporal bones, posterior to the sphenoid bone, superior to the atlas first cervical vertebra. It articulates with the parietal bones at the lambdoid suture, temporal bones at the occipitomastoid sutures and the petrooccipital synchondrices, sphenoid bone at the sphenooccipital synchondrices, Atlas at the atlantocipital joints. Ossification. Ossification of the occipital bone occurs at nine ossification centers. These are found in the squamous part, with four centers found here, which appear in utero during the second month. Basilar part, with one center found here, which appears in utero during the second month. Right and left lateral parts, with two centers found in each, which appear in utero during the second month. At birth, the squamous, basilar, and lateral parts of the occipital bone remain unfused. The squamous and lateral parts fuse with each other during the second year, while the lateral and basilar parts fuse with each other during the third to fourth years. Variations. In some individuals, a third occipital condyle may be present. The occipital bone may be fused with the atlas, known as atlantocipital assimilation. The superior portion of the squamous part of occipital bone may fail to fuse with the rest of the bone, resulting in the presence of an interparietal bone inca bone. The occipital bone also displays sexual dimorphism, where the nuchal lines and external occipital protuberance tend to be heavier in males than females. List of clinical correlates. Fracture of occipital bone. Occipital horn syndrome. Craniosynostasis. Parts of occipital bone. The basilar part base occipital or clival part is the quadrilateral portion of the occipital bone that is located anterosuperior to the foramen magnum. It is continuous posteriorly with both the right and left lateral parts of the occipital bone. The medial portion of the groove for the inferior petrosal sinus 
and the posterior portion of the clivus. It provides insertion sites for the longus capitis and rectus capitis anterior muscles, and an attachment site for the pharyngeal raphe and anterior atlantocipital membrane. The basilar part articulates anteriorly with the posterior surface of the body of sphenoid bone, forming the sphenoocipital synchondrosis. Laterally, with the petrous part of temporal bone, contributing to the formation of the petrooccipital synchondrosis. The lateral parts condylar, or exoccipital parts, are the two portions of the occipital bone that are located lateral to the foramen magnum. They are both continuous. Anteriorly, with the basilar part of occipital bone. Posteriorly, with the squamous part of occipital bone. On its corresponding side, each lateral part of occipital bone consists of an occipital condyle, condylar fossa, jugular process, jugular tubercle, inferior portion of a groove for sigmoid sinus and hypoglossal and condylar canals. Provides an insertion site for a rectus capitis lateralis muscle. Articulates inferiorly with a superior articular facet of the atlas first cervical vertebra forming an atlantocipital joint. The squamous part of occipital bone is the expanded curved plate of bone that is located superior to the foramen magnum. Mastoid and lambdoid borders and superior and lateral angles. The internal surface of the squamous part is concave and consists of the internal occipital protuberance and internal occipital crest. Grooves for the superior sagittal cerebral and cerebellar fossae. The external surface of the squamous part is convex and consists of the external occipital protuberance and external occipital crest, supreme, superior, and inferior nuchal lines. The squamous part provides origin sites for the descending part of trapezius muscle in the occipital belly of occipitofrontalis muscle. Insertion sites for the sternocleidomastid obliquus capitis superior, semispinalis capitis, splenius capitis, and rectus capitis posterior major and minor muscles. Attachment sites for the nuchal ligament, falx cerebri, falx cerebelli, epicranial aponeurosis, and posterior atlantocipital membrane. The condylar canal allows for the passage of a condylar emissary vein. The foramen lacerum is a relatively large, irregularly shaped opening found along the posteromedial area of the middle cranial fossa. Specifically, the foramen lacerum allows for the passage of meningeal arterial branches, emissary veins, and a deep petrosal nerve. The foramen magnum is a large oval opening found along the anteroinferior aspect of the occipital bone. Its margin is formed anteriorly by the basilar part of the occipital bone, laterally by both the right and left lateral parts of the occipital bone, posteriorly by the squamous part of the occipital bone. The following craniometric points are found along the margin of the foramen magnum. The basion, which is found along its anteromedial margin. The epistheon, which is found along its posteromedial margin. The foramen magnum allows for the passage of the following structures between the cranial cavity and vertebral canal. The inferior end of the medulla oblongata and its accompanying meninges vertebral arteries, anterior and posterior spinal arteries, 
the foramen magnum is larger in males than females. The hypoglossal canal anterior condylar canal or anterior condyloid canal is the anteriorly located tubular passage found in the lateral parts of the occipital bone. Each hypoglossal canal is located between the occipital condyle and the jugular tubercle. It extends obliquely, anterolaterally from its extracranial opening to its intracranial opening, which is found medial to a jugular notch of occipital bone. The hypoglossal canal allows for the passage of the hypoglossal branch of neuromeningeal trunk and the hypoglossal nerve. The jugular foramen is a large, irregularly shaped opening found along the posterolateral area of the cranial base, lateral to the foramen magnum. The jugular foramen allows for the passage of the meningeal branch of the occipital artery, internal jugular vein, and inferior petrosal sinus, as well as the glossopharyngeal, vagus, nerve. Surfaces of occipital bone. The cerebellar fossae are the two inferiorly located quadrilateral depressions found along the internal surface of the squamous part of occipital bone. They are located inferior to the grooves for transverse sinuses and are separated from each other by the internal occipital crest. The two cerebellar fossae of occipital bone lie anteroinferior to its two cerebral fossae and accommodate the hemispheres of the cerebellum. The cerebral fossae are the two superiorly located triangular depressions found along the internal surface of the squamous part of occipital bone. They are located superior to the grooves for transverse sinuses and are separated from each other by the groove for the superior sigital sinus. The two cerebral fossae of occipital bone lie posterior superior to its two cerebellar fossae and accommodate the occipital lobes of the cerebrum. The cruciform eminence is the cross-shaped arrangement found along the internal surface of the squamous part of occipital bone. It consists of the groove for the superior sigital sinus, which forms its superior vertical line, internal occipital crest, right and left grooves for transverse sinuses, which form its right and left horizontal lines, respectively internal occipital protuberance, which is located at its center, the cruciform eminence divides the internal surface of the squamous part of occipital bone into four fossae, two superiorly located cerebral fossae, two inferior located cerebellar fossae. The jugular processes are the two laterally projecting processes found along the lateral parts of the occipital bone. They are located lateral to the occipital condyles, each jugular process. Consists of a jugular notch and the inferior portion of a groove for sigmoid sinus. Provides an insertion site for a rectus capitis lateralis muscle. The lateral angles are the areas on both sides of the squamous part of occipital bone, where the mastoid and lambdoid borders meet. They are blunted in appearance and are each located at an asterion. The mastoid borders mastoid margins are the two laterally located margins of the occipital bone. On their corresponding sides, each mastoid border of occipital bone extends anteroinferiorly from the lateral angle to the jugular process. The nuchal plane is the rough inferiorly located convex area found along the external surface of the squamous part of occipital bone. It is separated from the occipital plane by the superior nuchal lines. The nuchal plane provides insertion sites for the obliquus capitis superior, semispinalis capitis, and rectus capitis posterior major and minor muscles. An attachment site for the nuchal ligament the occipital plane is the smooth, superiorly located, convex area found along the external surface of the squamous part of occipital bone. It is separated from the nuchal plane by the superior nuchal lines and consists of the supreme nuchal lines. The occipital plane provides an origin site for the occipital belly of occipitofrontalis muscle 
and an attachment site for the epicranial aponeurosis. The superior angle is the area of the squamous part of occipital bone where its right and left lambdoid borders meet. It is pointed in appearance and is located at the lambda. The posterior portion of the groove for the superior sagittal sinus is found along the internal surface of the superior angle of occipital bone. In summary, the occipital bone is a cornerstone of understanding human anatomy and health. Its significance cannot be overlooked, as it serves as a protective shield for the brain and facilitates essential functions like vision and movement. I encourage you to explore more anatomy-related videos on our channel to deepen your knowledge. Share your thoughts about the occipital bone in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing insights into the wonders of the human body. Thank you.